Hi there, I'm in Avignon, capital of the Vaucluse, World Heritage Site, and home of the World Processing Tomato Council. Maybe we'll leave that for another time. Let's go and explore those World Heritage bits. Nearby name might be the most Roman city outside Italy, but back in the 14th century, this was the real deal. Seven successive popes set up shop here, as it was conveniently close to the most powerful state in Western Europe, France. Incidentally, Avignon, like nearby Carpentras, didn't become part of France until the French Revolution. And if the Papal Palace seems more like a fortress than a nice country pad, it was with good reason, as we'll find out by visiting this sticky out bit here. But first, let's head for the high ground of the Cathedral Gardens, to get some perspective and take in the atmosphere, which is turned up to 11 when the bells are in full toll. Let's go look at that sticky out bit. This is the Pont d'Avignon, or officially the Pont saint benezet named after an illiterate shepherd who managed to persuade the bishop to build a bridge here after getting a vision from God. And it was a task so tricky that even the Romans hadn't attempted it. Unfortunately, Benezet died before his bridge was completed, but at least he didn't live to see its first demolition thanks to Louis VIII of France who, with the Pope's blessing, gave up on crusading in the Middle East and concentrated on some local pillaging. But it wasn't just the crusaders that created the headache for the bridge's maintainers. Over time, the mighty river Rhone has been constantly moving and undermining the bridge's foundations. And judging by old pictures of the bridge, it seems to have spent more time down than up. In the end, a mini ice age in the 1600s finally did for it, and what was left could fade into obscurity. Well, that's what should have happened but for this guy. We can see the bridge which is visited by 300,000 people a year from a different angle if we catch a free ride across the Rhone to Bartolas Island where the locals like to stretch their legs. Remember this guy? Well it was only 15 seconds ago. He's Adolf Adam and he was a phenomenally successful comic opera composer. You want to know how successful? Well he wrote this and he didn't even think to include it in his memoirs. Anyway, Adolf had hit on hard times after losing everything in the 1848 Paris Uprising and was in need of a hit or two to get him out of the red. And while looking for inspiration, he stumbled across an old ditty that the kids around here used to sing. And it goes like this. <clears throat> oh, maybe not. But there's controversy over whether he got what they were singing right. Is it sous le pont or sous le pont? And the answer is probably neither as kids around here back in the day spoke a dialect of Occitan rather than French. Perhaps we should go and grab something to eat from one of the cafes by the Hotel de Ville. Or perhaps not. Not until we've got madder and painted the town red. Or at least this guy has. We saw him in the Cathedral Gardens. And here is where the mad red action happened. This is the Rue de Tinturier. Hmm, sounds better than Dyer Street, doesn't it? And it was a hive of activity for producing textiles. But there was one colour which was in demand which was tricky to produce. Red, or more specifically madder red, which is the product of the madder plant. Jean Elton, born Hovhannes Altunian, yep, nailed that pronunciation, was born in modern day Iran and had a pretty tricky start to life. What with war and the death of his parents, he ended up being sold into slavery, but he learned the art of dyeing cloth while in captivity. He managed to escape to France, bringing madder seeds with him, an act punishable by death, and as a result, Avignon ended up with a prosperous trade in dyeing things red which caught on to such an extent, even the soldiers' trousers ended up mad red. Meanwhile, Jean ended up dying penniless. Well, I'm sure there's a moral there somewhere. Anyway, this street is also the home of the Peniton Gris, which was set up by Louis VIII, you know, the crusading guy, to make up for the things he and his buddies did while on tour. I'm sure there's a moral in there as well. But let's leave all that behind and have a wander around the rest of the town where we can find some typical French things, like this red double-decker bus. Hang on a minute. It turns out Avignon's a good place to learn English and has a festival every year with music, theatre, cinema and books. So if you know anyone who wants to improve their English, like what I do, then sometime here might do the trick. 
let's have a final look around. Pick up a souvenir or two, maybe from this place that specialises in eco-responsible products, before catching the train to... hmm, where next? If you'd like to know more about Avignon and the things we looked at, I've left some details in the description, along with how to get here. Oh, and any chance of a like and subscribe? Thanks. Cheerio!